Hi, I'm here to discuss with you proposal review. This is the fourth presentation for the fourth week of the ISTF chapter funding workshop. So what we'll cover is um, review by foundations without a transparent process, review of letter of intents, letters of intent, and then review of full proposals. So there are many foundations that won't have a transparent process for review uh, for, the, for the proposals that they receive. This might include private foundations and, and, and others in, in the United States and other organizations that may not publicize how they select proposals for funding. The process may be rather ad hoc or subjective, depending on the personal preferences of the major funder or program officer. Now this is within the rights of these funders since this is their money. However, there is an international push for greater transparency in how decisions are made for funding awards and also about the successes and failures of different programs and approaches. So let's consider briefly how a letter of intent might be reviewed. And we'll use as an example, the Russell Sage Foundation and their process. And this process will vary from organization to organization, but this is a good example. So they do internal review first with three staff officers, staff members who um, read through the letter of intent and see if it fits with the foundation purposes if it's clear in presentation and whether there's sufficient detail in how the methods, how they're gonna be carried out. And if the letter of intent doesn't pass this initial screening, it's just declined and that's it. If it does pass the initial screening, well, it is sent out for external review to three reviewers from outside of the foundation. And then based on the recommendations of those external reviewers who can be considered to be more objective or maybe specialists who understand about the particular content of that program or that, uh, that, they, want, that they want to carry out, based on their recommendations then, going back to the Russell Sage Foundation staff, they will decide which projects to invite for a full proposal. And again, this process will vary on letters of intent from one foundation or agency to another. So then let's consider in general, review of full proposals. Larger government agencies and foundations are likely to have a more structured approach, more elaborate for how they review the proposals that come in. Smaller foundations and private foundations are likely to maybe be less transparent, to maybe have a down, scaled down expert review or none at all. So let's consider then what happens with the large foundation or government agency usually. Well, often in the call for proposals, they will specify the criteria that will be used to evaluate the proposals that come in. That's fair because then you know what you're supposed to be writing to. And then the proposals that are submitted, there will often be an external board of expert reviewers from outside of the foundation or agency who will read through the proposals, critique them, and rank them. There, these, may, these external reviewers may even form a panel to discuss these proposals and report on the results of the discussion back to the foundation or agency program officer. And that program officer may make the final decision on which proposals are to be funded. Now, given these, re these review processes, these have consequences for how you will write your proposal. And understanding the review process at that agency or foundation you're gonna submit the proposal to will help you prepare a better proposal because your proposal must win over the reviewers. Now, one of the key things you need to do in speaking to reviewers is carefully craft the summary of your proposal. 
to sell your idea, to explain the overall concept. And this is because sometimes review occurs in stages. And at the first stage of the review, the first group of reviewers may only get the summary to look at to see if that concept is worth moving forward into another stage of fuller review. And then there may sometimes also be that some reviewers will get the full proposal and other reviewers may only get the summary to look at. But all these reviewers will weigh in on the decision about which things are worth funding. So you need to make sure your, your summary is well conceived. Another point to remember is that reviewers are busy people. Some will only skim the proposal. So you need to put the key points of, at the beginning of each section and use some kind of emphasis, such as perhaps using bold text or boxes around key points to make sure they pick it up. Then you need to also make sure that your proposal is written in a way that it is accessible to the educated non-specialists. Reviewers may not have your particular expertise and you want to make all of your writing as easy to understand as possible. Okay, so we're gonna pick up a couple of examples now of how review might go at larger organizations. First thing I wanna talk about is USAID, US Agency for International Development. First, let's consider how you might even find funding from the USAID. Well, there's a website called grants.gov where a lot of USAID announcements show up. You go to that website, you look down here on the left side and you, all the agencies in the US government are listed and you click the box for the USAID. And then you go up to the categories of kinds of funding. And in this case, I checked the box for natural resources. And lo and behold, up here showed an opportunity for sustainable landscapes. So how would proposals on, for sustainable landscapes in one country or another be reviewed by the USAID? Okay, so this is the call for proposals is called the Broad Agency Announcement or BAA. Now, the review process itself is discussed in, the B, in, the, in this BAA. And they start, they say, with a call for letters of intent of two pages, which are reviewed against the criteria listed in the call for proposals. And then of those submitted letters, expressions of interest or letters of interest, um, those that are selected are invited to collaborate to develop a concept paper. This is a little different because USAID is so interested in these proposals being well conceived, they will participate in their development and perhaps add, add additional partners. So these concept papers or proposals will be five to 10 pages. Now, some of them won't mature well. So some of them, even though they invested time in it, will just be shelved and won't move on to full review. Other concept papers will have developed well, the collaborations will have gone well, and so they will be sent for technical review by a board of experts composed of people from within USAID and, without US, and from outside of USAID. Then the recommendations coming back from that review, based on that, the USAID contracting agreement officer will make a final determination on which proposals should be funded. So, and the USAID generally lists then in the broad, in the agency announcements for funding, what the criteria are for reviewing the proposals. And these can include such things as past performance, how the organization has done in past funding, doesn't have to be from USAID, the quality of their technical approach to implementing the program, the quality of the people who are going to be carrying out the program, the capacity of the organization to make sure that it happens, 
And then the management of how the project will move forward of the activities themselves. That's, how, so that's an example of how USAID will carry out review. Now let's look briefly at an example from fund for proposals submitted to the European Union. So going over this diagram here in a general way, the proposal at the top is submitted and checked for eligibility against the criteria for the program. If they're eligible, they move on to be evaluated by individual evaluators. And those um, evaluations are brought together to some kind of consensus about which proposal should move forward for ethical evaluation, how that proposal complies with ethical, ethical considerations. And those that pass that threshold move forward perhaps to group hearings or panel discussions. And then eventually proposals are ranked by which ones are priority for funding and which are not. Some of them are rejected. Some of them move on to negotiations and on finally to funding. So that gives you a general idea of different ways that proposals might be evaluated. And it's good to get that information for yourself for programs you want to submit to. Now, here are some references on how the USAID and the European Union might um, <clears throat> look at proposals why a grant maker might select one proposal over another. And the University of Limerick has a nice summary of proposal review processes in general, and even business proposals need to be reviewed. So for your homework, I would like you to select two of the funders, those two funders you, you selected in 4.2, and then go and investigate, see if you can find out how they review proposals or letters of intent. Thank you for coming on and we will see you next week.